that the original description of M mode echocardiography in was done by Dr. N. J. Adler and his sister friends, Dr. Helmut Hertz. They marked the beginning of a new diagnostic non-invasive technique. Adler used this technique primarily for the pre-operative study of mitral stenosis and diagnosis of mitral regurgitation. For his um, efforts in echocardiography and his achievements, he was announced as father of echocardiography. This is the picture depicting uh, where they demonstrated the poster in 1977 symposium on echocardiography in the University of Moon. The origin of echocardiography or the 2D echo, Adler called it ultrasound cardiography or UCG. The first diagnostic ultrasound in medicine was done by a neurologist to detect the midline shift caused by in, uh, infracranial space occupying mouth in the brain. And it was termed as echo and cephalography. So the ultrasonic examination of brain was echo and cephalography. Then the examination of the heart should be echocardiography. ECG was already being used for electrocardiography. So at that time, abbreviation of echo cannot be used because it did not differentiate be between the echocardiography and the echo and cephalography. Now, in the current practice, the abbreviation echo is only used for echocardiography as the echo and cephalography has disappeared. These were the early echocardiographic equipment used by Adler and Hertz to record M mode echograms, which used multi element transducers that provided an electronic linear scan and represented the first real time two dimensional echographic system. Currently, we have this small portable high quality probe where we can see uh, the view in three dimensions. So, you now we are more well, more used to these portable machines and which you have seen in the ICU or in the uh, ultrasound room. The lady with the lamp, Florence Nightingale. We all know that she was the pioneer of more modern nursing. If you, are, if you are aware of the polio epidemic, you must also be knowing about that iron lung machine which was used to ventilate these patients. So, in 1952, John Ibsen, which was a Danish anesthetist, was involved in a polio epidemic of 2,722 cases in six months. So, the supply of the traditional iron lung ventilator became overwhelmed. So, what did Ibsen do? He used positive pressure ventilation after intubating these patients, and he enlisted a rota of 1,500 medical students, nurses, and retired staff to manfully or manually ventilate them. So this led to a development of dedicated ward where each patient could have their own nurse. So in December 1953, the speciality of intensive care was formed, which led to a reduction of mortality from 90% to 15%. And Ibsen is considered the founding father of intensive care. Now we are more we see these uh, ultra modern ICU units where we have well equipped monitoring, therapeutic devices. The availability is there, and there is all of these are tailored to the patient needs. The whole approach there is a holistic approach for patient management. There is a competent staff, competent doctors, the intensivists present. The evaluation, integration, and development set of priorities are there. The objective care for the patient, there is a multidisciplinary tree, the dedicated nurse and physician, there is high nurse to patient ratio and physician to patient ratio. This picture demonstrates the beauty of intensive care and the effort they put in managing a patient. If you just see, there are a lot of, you know, monitoring devices, there's infusion pump, there's an ECMO machine which you can see, which is circled by yellow, and uh, there is an echo machine by that, circled by that, and there is this, you know, uh, dialysis machine, which is, you know, doing the dialysis for the patient. So if you see this scenario, or if you see this picture, you see how much close monitoring a patient requires. 
when the patient needs to be you know stabilized critical care ultrasonography that is ccus refers to the use of ultrasonography in patients who are critically ill or unstable. Now, there are various elements of CCUS that is focus point of care ultrasonography, TUS that is thoracic ultrasonography, LUS that is lung ultrasonography, abdominal pelvic ultrasonography, vascular, and then we have this cardiac ultrasonography or the CCE that is critical care echocardiography. Now, critical care eco echocardiography, it uses portable equipment that is compact and it's relatively inexpensive. The image acquisition and interpretation is done at bedside by the intensivist so that the results can be immediately integrated into a comprehensive management plan. The echo is typically best suited for patients who have you know, imminent life threatening processes. We need to use this to categorize shock and respiratory failure, also to check for coexisting diagnosis and complications of therapy, to track the evolution of critical illness by serial examination. Now, several st studies showed that the use of ECHO resulted in immediate change in management up to 50%. The ECHO by non cardiologist So, till now we were. Uh, used to doing echo by a cardiology but when the concept of echo or the screening echo was introduced in the icu setting or in the emergency setting so this led to a rapid development and rapid uh, diagnosing the diseases rapid diagnosis the condition which can lead to which morbidity of the patient so one study of pocket size ultrasound devices was done in an icu and the investigators found there was a good correlation with conventional echocardiography in assessment of global left ventricular systolic function and severe right ventricular dilatation ivc dilatation respiratory variation to ivc diameter as well as pericardial effusion and com compressive pericardial effusion the IC physicians were given a short course limited to interpretation of LV size and function, RV dilation, pericardial effusion, pure effusion, and they were able to get 93% of claims conversion with close agreement with the interpretation of an expert operator. In the similar study, intensivists were given a 10 hour course in ECHO, and their interpretation correlated well with those of experienced echocardiographers in 84% of examination, which led to the immediate treatment adjustment in 40% of the subjects.